Okay, we've talked already about mass energy equivalence. So here's an example of how this is useful. Let's say we want to convert 1.0 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms into a more usable unit of energy. One of the things we could do is convert into atomic mass units or unified atomic mass units. We express that with U or AMU, and you've seen it in chemistry class. But there's another really cool thing we can do. If energy is equal to mc squared, then we could take the equation for energy, and we could say mass is equal to the amount of energy over c squared. We already know that 1u is equal to roughly, or packs in, roughly 931.5 mega electron volts of energy. So if you take one neutron, which has about one U as its mass, then that one neutron has packed into it this much energy. And that's something we could calculate and prove. But there's another cool thing that we can do here. Instead of talking about U as having this energy, we could also say, plug 1u, plug that in here as the mass, plug this in as the energy. And what do we get? We get the mass of a neutron is 1u, which equals 931.5 mega electron volts per c squared, or times c to the negative 2. In other words, we can treat mega electron volts per c squared. That can be treated as a unit of mass. And check it out, this is so cool. If we look at the IB physics data booklet on the page with all of the fundamental constants here, what do they show us at the bottom? Unified atomic mass unit, u is equal to this many kilograms which equals 931.5 mega electron volts per c squared. So this right here, MeV per c squared, let's zoom in, MeV per c squared, that is a unit of mass. If you want to convert that mass into energy, you multiply by c squared, this goes away, and now you have instantly mega electron volts as your energy. So let's show that with a problem. Here's one I'm going to make up. A nucleus has as its mass 451 giga electron volts. Giga is 10 to the 9. What? Oh, wait. Giga electron volts, c to the negative 2. What's the energy of the nucleus? And let's say, what's the energy of the nucleus at rest? So what's the energy just due to its mass? Well, energy is m times c squared. For m, what do we plug in? We plug in the value from above. 451 giga electron volts times c to the negative 2. And this gives us... a really lovely situation. The c to the negative 2 and c squared become 1, and what's our answer? It's just 451 giga electron volts. We can do the same thing, but converting instead from kilograms. kilograms. So here's a nucleus which has a rest mass of 10 0.038 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. That's a given. You don't need to write it down. It's so obvious, but I will just because, uh, you know, because I want to fill the space. Got to fill it with something, right? Let's see. Why can I? How can I get this to? There we go. Now what we have to do is find the mass in giga electron volts. So I take this value, 
and I have to convert it to giga electron volts. In order, uh, and it should be giga electron volts c to the negative 2, that's a typo. In order to convert this, I need a conversion factor. I want to cancel out kilograms and convert to giga electron volts times c to the negative 2. If I look back at the data booklet, I see 1.661 one times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms is equal to this many mega electron volts c to the negative 2. And of course, to get from mega to giga, you would just have to slide the decimal place to the left 3. So 1.661 e negative 27 kilograms is equal to this many giga electron volts. Let's write that down as our conversion factor. How many kilograms was it? 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27. And what was it for giga electron volts? It was 0.9315. So what's the mass going to be? You just calculate the kilograms cancels and the units that you have left over are giga electron volts per c squared. So you find your answer.